In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some simple harmonic motion with a block that is oscillating back and forth, being attached to a spring. We're gonna be taking a look at three different graphs, one of kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. And then from there, we're also going to solve for the spring constant by analyzing these graphs and getting the period. So basically what's happening is if you pull a spring down, it gets stretched to its maximum position. And when you release it, it's going to accelerate through its equilibrium position and then back to the top as the spring is compressing against that block. And then it's gonna that compression is gonna push it back downwards. It's gonna accelerate down through the equilibrium position. And then as it's stretching away, it's gonna slow down and then reach a velocity of zero at the bottom again. And then it's gonna repeat that cycle over and over. So when we're taking a look at the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared and the mass of the block is staying constant so it's really the velocity that's changing that kinetic energy now when you start off at this stretch position where it's stretched to its maximum it's definitely going to be starting at a kinetic energy of zero and we're going to go ahead and label that b for bottom so we got b for bottom eq for equilibrium position where the spring is not stretched or compressed and then we have t for the top position so it's starting from the bottom position and then now it's being pulled up. So it's gonna be accelerating towards the top. And then at the equilibrium position is where it's gonna be going the absolute fastest because it's gonna be going faster and faster, moving upwards. And then it's gonna move its fastest through the equilibrium position. And then now when it starts to compress the spring, the spring is gonna push against it and make it slow down. And then it's gonna make it slow down more and more and more and more until it eventually reaches a velocity of zero again at the top. Um, actually, let's go ahead and smooth this out just a little bit. And then it basically repeats that cycle. And then now when the block is at the top position, it gets compressed downwards in this purple direction. And then it's gonna speed it up more and more and more. And then it's gonna reach its peak velocity again at the equilibrium position. And then as it's moving down towards the bottom, um, the spring, again, is going to get stretched as it's going this way, and that stretch is going against the motion of the object. If it's going downwards and it, the spring is trying to stretch and pull it upwards, it's going to slow it down again, and then it's going to reach that bottom position with a velocity of zero. And then again, it's going to get pulled up through the equilibrium position, and then it's going to max out its velocity again, and then the cycle goes on and on. All right. So with our second graph, we are going to be taking a look at the gravitational potential energy, and that is mgh, where g is the constant 9.8, and again, the mass of the block is going to be constant for the situation we're taking a look at. So it's um, just the height that's the main factor in affecting how the gravitational potential energy changes. Now, when you're taking a look at the gravitational potential energy, you kind of pick your baseline height. So let's go, go ahead and say that at the equilibrium position, it's zero. And then if we're going under zero, that's in the negative direction. And then if we're going above zero, um, that is in the positive direction. So if our starting position is at the bottom, the bottom is going to be below zero. So we're going to be down here for our bottom position. And then as it gets pulled upward, it's going to accelerate towards that zero. So it's going to accelerate up towards the zero. And that zero is going to be where that equilibrium position is going to be. And then from there, it's going to slow the rate that it's rising because the spring is starting to compress against it after it's gone from the bottom to the equilibrium to the top. It's getting more and more of that compression against it. And then it's going to reach its very top positive gravitational potential energy value when it's at the T, the top. And then that compression of the spring is going to push it back down again towards zero. Okay, and then hit that position of zero. And as it accelerates towards that zero, it's going to come down again and then move towards the bottom and as it's moving towards the bottom, 
Again, as usual, it's stretching the spring and it's moving downward. That stretch is going upward, so it's going against it. It's going to cause it to slow down at that bottom position. And then it's going to rise up again as the spring is using that restoring force to pull it up and accelerate it back towards equilibrium position. And then it's going to hit that equilibrium position a third time. So for this one, it's going to have that simple harmonic motion in sort of like bigger waves as opposed to these smaller changes in the energy as the kinetic energy does. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the spring potential energy. So this one also has to do with position as well, just like our gravitational potential energy. Um, but that position has to do with the amount of stretch from equilibrium. So it's one half kx squared. K is a spring constant. It's basically um, a constant for this situation because we're not changing the spring. Um, so it's all based on the amount of stretch or compression, which is the x value. So to begin with, again, we're pulling it down to position B to start off with. And position B is going to start at its maximum X value, which is going to be uh, right up here. And then just like kinetic energy, this is V squared, so it can never be negative. And then this is X squared, so that can also never be negative as well. So it has its maximum amount of energy because it is um, stretched to the maximum amount away from the equilibrium position. And that's going to accelerate towards the equilibrium position until it taps zero. And then as it passes through the equilibrium position over here, it's gonna to start to rise to the top. So it's getting that compression that's pushing against it. So the rate that it's increasing is gonna be less, less and less, but it's gonna reach its um, maximum value because of the maximum amount of compression right here when it reaches the top position. And then now when it reaches the top position again, because it's completely compressed, it's gonna push it back and it's gonna make it speed up towards that equilibrium position to where it's not gonna give it a lot of um, gravitational, excuse me, uh, spring potential energy because it's reaching that equilibrium position. And if it's not stretched or compressed, then our X value is zero. So we do not have any. And then again, it's moving through the equilibrium position and accelerating towards that B, which is the bottom position. So it's gonna slowly start to rise up to that bottom position. And then from that bottom position, as it's all the way stretched, it's going to yank it back and accelerate it towards the equilibrium position again. And that's where we're gonna end off for our final point. So in analyzing all of these um, for the kinetic energy, you're going to think about how those stretches and compressions affect the um, velocity of the object, where it's always going to be zero at its maximums. And then for the gravitational potential energy, you're going to be analyzing the height and then um, noticing where those stretch, stretches and compressions move the object vertically. And then for the spring potential energy, we're focused on the X, the amount of stretch or compression. And then that's going to largely affect what's going on with its curve as making it rise and fall. Now, finally, we have the formula, which is the period of an oscillating spring, which is 2 pi times the square root of the mass of the object divided by K, the spring constant. Now, what you can do is if you wanted to solve for the spring constant of this particular spring, um, what you can do is use your graph. Now, in order to find a full period, a period is one complete cycle. So say, for example, you're looking for your first graph. It might be from your beginning time, which would be time zero, to the next time it hits the bottom position again, which would be right over here. So remember, if you're solving for a period, make sure you find one full cycle. So where it's at that particular position until it returns back to that particular position again. So let's go ahead and say that maybe it takes 1.7 seconds for that full period. Then we have 1.7 equals two pi. And then we got the square root of M over K. And then let's go ahead and say that the mass is half a kilogram. And then we're going to divide that by K and then solve for our spring constant. 
So what we can do is we can go ahead and divide both sides by two pi. And then we can go ahead and square both sides and then squaring it will basically get rid of this square root. And then after we complete that, then we would have 0 0.073 after dividing these two and then squaring it. And that would equal 0 0.5 over K now that we've gotten rid of that square root. And then our final step would be to go ahead and maybe cross multiply these over. So then K would be 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.073. And that would make your K value 6.83 newtons per meter. So that's a pretty loose spring then. So now that we've analyzed the oscillating spring, some different energy graphs, and we went ahead and looked at the period of a spring formula and solved for the spring constant, I hope that was educational and helpful to you. So thank you very much for watching and listening.